Hello everyone. Information box Ticket Lifestyles brings you today virology topic on polio virus. But before starting this video, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button. Let's see what is our table of content. We will learn the structure, its genome, epidemiology, replication, pathogenesis, clinical manifestation, laboratory diagnosis, treatment, prevention and control. Let's start this video with the structure of polio virus. With the help of this diagram, we will understand the structure. The polio virus belongs to the P. coronaviridae virus family. Virons have a diameter of about 27 nanometer and are spherical in form. The particles are made up of a protein shell encircling a naked RNA genome, making them simple particles. The genome is monopartite linear, single-stranded RNA-positive, polyadenylated and contains a single ORF that codes for a polyprotein. Its size ranges from 7.2 to 8.5 kb. The four basic proteins VP1, VP2, VP3 and VP4 make up the capsids. The protomer, which has one duplicate of each of the three capsid proteins, VP1, VP2 and VP4, is the fundamental component of P. coronavirus capsid. VP1 and VP3 combine to create the shell and VP4 is located in the interior surface. The viral particles have no lipid envelope and organic solvents have no effect on the capacity to spread infection. Genome of Poliovirus with the help of this diagram, we will understand the genome. The DNA of the poliovirus is composed of three parts. Uncapped, making about 10% of the genome, the 5' prime non-coding region NCR is covalently attached to the viral protein VPG at its terminus. A single open reading frame, dubbed P1 for capsid proteins and P2 and P3 for non-structural proteins, appear to encode all of the viral proteins. A 3' prime NCR that ends in a poly A tip is brief. The length of the chromosomes ranges from 7209 to 8450 paces. Internal ribosome entry site a component that controls messenger RNA translation by internal ribosome binding is present in the 5' non coding region. The regions P1 comprises the 1A VP4, 1B VP2, 1C VP3, and 1D VP1 segments for the structural proteins that make up the capsid protein. Three non structural proteins, 2A, 2B, and 2C make up P2 and are involved in viral reproduction. Four non-structural proteins make up P3. The reproduction complex is anchored to the cell membrane by 3A. It is a VPG protein 3B. Cysteine protease is the enzyme that separates the protein from the polypeptides in 3C. RNA reliant RNA polymerase is used in 3D. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Next is epidemiology of poliovirus. Three epidemiological stages have been observed for poliomyelitis. First, endemic, second, epidemic, and third is vaccine era. Poliomyelitis was present everywhere prior to the start of global eradication attempts. It was a year around in tropical regions and seasonal in temperate regions. A winter epidemic was unusual. The illness affects people of all ages, but because adults have developed acquired immunity, toddlers are typically more vulnerable than adults. Poliomyelitis, also known as infinitile paralysis, affects infant and young children in poor countries where the environment is conducive to the widespread spread of the virus. Prior to vaccination, the age distribution changed in developed nations with the most patients being older than 5 years old and 25% being older than 15 years old. The case fatality rate varies and can range from 5% to 10%. It is greater in the oldest patients. 
The number of paralytic poliomyelitis cases per year was around 21,000 prior to the start of vaccination programs in the US. The only known source of transmission is humans. In the temperate regions with high levels of hygiene, epidemics have been followed by little in viral spread until enough susceptible young people have reached adulthood to create a reservoir for transmission in the area. Replication of poliovirus With the help of this diagram, we will understand the replication. The virus uncoils its DNA after binding to the cellular receptor. Next, the virus RNA is depleted of VPG before being translated. Individual virus proteins are produced through nascent cleavage of the polyprotein. Membrane compartments are where RNA is created. The viral RNA polymerase copies viral positive strand RNA to create full length minus strand RNAs, which are then copied to create more positive strand RNAs. Translation of freshly synthesized positive strain RNA early in infection results in the production of extra viral proteins. The positive strains join the morphogenic pathway later in the infection. Viral particles that have been just created are expelled from the cell by lysis. Next is the pathogenesis of poliovirus. When contaminated water is consumed, the virus enters the body through the mouth via the fecal oral pathway. In the beginning, the orthophyanex and gastrointestinal mucosoa of the virus proliferate. Before symptoms appear, the virus frequently found in the phyanex and stools. The proteas, other digestive enzymes and bile lactic activities cannot harm viruses because they are immune to stomach acidity. The tonsils and pioneers patch of the ileum are the first parts of the body the virus enters and spreads to. A 9 to 12 day incubation time is required. Following this, the virus spreads to the nearby lymph nodes before entering the blood and producing primary viremia. Early in the illness, typical before paralysis sets in, antiviral antibodies start to manifest. To stop an infection from expanding, antibodies are created. Invading the bloodstream and producing secondary viremia, the virus multiplies and infects the reticular endothelial system over time. The poliovirus crosses the blood-brain barrier and enters the brain during this time of viremia. The virus particularly combines with neural cells, demonstrating tissue trophism. The dorsal root ganglia, motor neurons, and interior horn of the spinal cord all have receptors that the virus can detect. Paralysis results when motor nerves are lost. Virus infection of the brain stem results in bulbar polyomyelitis. Next is clinical manifestation of poliovirus. The initial symptoms of viremia, which last for 1 to 5 days, include temperature, malasses, headache, drowsiness, constipation, and sore throat. The incubation phase lasts for 10 days on average, but it can also be 4 days or 4 weeks. Number 1. Asymptomatic Illness It results from a viral illness that is limited to intestine and orophinax. Number 2. Abortive Poliomyelitis it is a minor disease that affects about 5% of those who are infected. It is a febrile illness that includes vomiting, nausea, headaches, sore throats, lack of appetite, and abdominal discomfort. Typically, neurological signs are non-existent. Number 3. Non-paralytic poliomyelitis some individuals who experience polio symptoms get a type of polio that doesn't cause paralysis. The mild, flu-like signs and symptoms that are characteristic of other viral illnesses are typically caused by this. Fever, sore throat, headache, vomiting, fatigue, back pain, neck pain, or pain in the limbs or legs are muscular weakness and tenderness are just a few signs of symptoms that can last up to 10 days. Number 4. Paralytic Polymyelitis 
initial paralytic polio symptoms such as temperature and headache frequently resemble non-paralytic polio symptoms. But after some week, additional symptoms start to show such as reflex loss, excruciating muscular pain or weaknesses, and shaking and droopy limbs, classide paralysis. Number 5. post polymyelitis Syndrome Some individuals experience post polio syndromes. A collection of incapacitating signs and symptoms years after they had polio. Common indications and symptoms include progressive joint pain and weakness, exhaustion, muscular atrophy, difficulty breathing and swallowing, breathing disorders associated with sleep such as sleep apnea and a decreased tolerance for cold temperature. Number 6. Bulbar polymyelitis the participation of cranial nerves, most frequently the 9th, 10th and 12th, is what causes this. The fine X muscles, vocal cords and respiration are often affected, making this disease more serious. 75% of the patients have the disease run the risk of dying. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Laboratory Diagnosis of Polio Virus The specimen is stool, rectal swab, throat swab, or cranial spinal fluid. Number 1. Microscopy By using immune electron microscopy or direct electron microscopy, viruses can be found in species samples. Although viral is infrequently seen in cerebrospinal fluid, lymphocytic Pileocytosis is primarily seen when cerebrospinal fluid is examined under the microscope. Number 2. Virus Isolation Feces and final gale desires may yield the virus. By cultivating on monkey kidney, human ammonium, Hella, Hep2, Buffalo green monkey, BRC5, and other cell cultures, viruses are isolated from excrement and throat swabs. In 3 to 6 days, cytopathogenic consequences become apparent. Cell retraction, increased refractivity, cytoplasmic granulity and nuclear pycnosis are a few examples of cytopathic impacts. By neutralizing an isolated virus with a particular antiserum, it can be recognized and typed. Number 3. Serodiagnosis Evidence of a fourfold rise in antibody tire in serum samples taken during an acute illness and during a period of recovery. To prove the existence of antibodies, neutralization and complement fixation tests are conducted. Number 4. Molecular Diagnosis Virus detection can also be accelerated using polymerase chain reaction tests. Treatment of poliovirus Unfortunately, there are no antiviral medications available to cure polymyelitis. Prevention and Control of Poliovirus To lower the risk of transmission in endemic countries, better sanitation, hygienic practices and water availability are crucial. The mainstay of the fight to eradicate polio is immunization and both live and killed viral vaccines are available. Self. A vaccine made from viruses produced in monkey kidney cultures is formalin inactivated. Vaccines for a killed virus elicit humoral antibodies but not local intestinal immunity, allowing the virus to continue to grow in the gut. In main monkey or human diploid cell cultures, the live attenuated virus sabin is grown before being administered orally. The live polio vaccine grows within the host, immunizes it against viral and strains and spreads infection. The vaccine results in the production of secretory IgA antibodies in the intestinal and in addition to immunoglobin M, IgM and IgG antibodies in the blood allowing mucosal immunity. Live and killed viral vaccine both produce antibodies and shield the central nervous system from future wide virus invasion. In the past, oral polio vaccines was the most widely used vaccine in global campaigns and it is still used in endemic regions. 
its benefit from inducing intestinal and humoral immunity as well as being affordable and simple to give. However, after receiving the live virus vaccine, the gut exhibits a much higher level of resistance, suggesting that it may serve as a potential interference limiter for oral vaccines. The drawback is the negligible chance of vaccine-associated paralytic poliomyelitis, which affects 4 out of every 100,000 immune children and unvaccinated contacts. The intramuscular injection of inactivated polio virus vaccine carries no danger of vaccine-associated paralytic poliomyelitis. Inactivated vaccines has the drawback of not crafting intestinal immunity, being ineffective at containing outbreaks, being more costly, and requiring better trained personnel for delivery. Over the past few decades, Oral polio vaccine use in European nations have progressively given way to inactivated polio vaccine use and all EU member states now use inactivated polio vaccine in their childhood immunization programs. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button. Thank you.